Hey gang, welcome back. So at the end of our discussion about drawing Lewis dot structures, I mentioned that we would be going on to discussing resonance and also formal charges. Well, I may have told you a little bit of a white lie, only because I want to talk about something else first. Don't worry, I would never actually lie to you guys. Okay, so what I want to talk about first is drawing structures not in Lewis dot form, but in a different form called bond line form. I'm sure you've probably seen this before. It's pretty much, if you were to Google organic chemistry, you'd see all those crazy lines and stuff. It's basically organic chemist's shorthand for drawing structures. And while it looks a little scary, it's a lot faster, and I pr guarantee you will prefer it in the near future. But let me just talk about it real quick, and then we'll get on to something else. Okay, so if I was going to draw you a Lewis dot structure of a structure called hexane, it would look like this. Okay, it has six carbons, and then this is what is called a saturated carbon chain. So it, there are going to be hydrogens to fill in all of these carbon bonds. You can see that this is taking a little bit of time, right? Okay, so so this is a structure called hexane, it has six carbons, and all of the other non-carbon carbon bonds are carbon hydrogen bonds. Right, so you can see that every carbon here has a full octet. Well, you saw that it took me a little bit of time to draw that, right? And we also know that instead of these bonds looking like 90 degree angles, we know that they're really 109.5 degree angles, right? Okay, so as you can probably tell, no one really draws this when they're doing organic chemistry. Instead, instead of the Lewis dot form, the form we just drew, organic chemists use something called bond line. So if I was to draw that same structure again, it would look like this. Done. So much faster. But let's discuss what this actually means. Okay, so in bond line, every juncture like that signifies a carbon. So it's understood that every carbon has four bonds, right? So at each juncture, you can count the carbon-carbon bonds. So let's take this guy, for example. We can see that he has a bond to a carbon here and a bond to a carbon there. So assuming his full octet, there are two implied hydrogens that we don't draw because it takes too much time, right? So by that logic, this guy right here also has two bonds to carbon. So he has two implied hydrogens. So does he. And you can see that this guy over here, he only has one carbon-carbon bond. So he has three implied hydrogens. So that's kind of the beauty of bond line. It's faster. There's no hydrogens that you have to just fill in and kind of clutter everything up. So it's quicker and cleaner to read. So let me just draw you another example. Okay, let's do a shorter one. Let's do a three carbon chain. Propane, which I'm sure you've probably heard of before. Right, so here would be the loose dot form. Okay, well, what if we wanted to draw that in bond line? Done, right? Because if we look at the middle carbon, he has two carbon-carbon bonds, two carbon-carbon bonds, and two implied hydrogens. And then the guys on the end, they only have one carbon-carbon bond, so they have three implied hydrogens on either side. This is the type of thing where it's best to just practice it instead of someone show you. And I have this on the first worksheet on the website, which includes Lewis dot structures and transferring bond line to Lewis dot structures or Lewis dot structures to bond line. So now that we've discussed this very quickly, you're ready for your first worksheet. And when you're done with that first worksheet, come back and then we will discuss formal charges, resonance, and a whole lot more.